The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Maria Elvira Luna Escudero Ali holds BA and MA degrees in philosophy, linguistics, and literature from La Pontificia Universidad Católica del Peru and a PhD in Iberian American Literature and Culture with a second concentration on applied linguistics from Georgetown University. She is the author of several articles on literature and culture, mostly related to the works of Mario Vargas Llosa. Currently, she is co-authoring with Professor Stephen Scenic from the Mathematics Department, Interdisciplinary Articles about the Mathematical Concepts from Jorge Luis Borges' text. Since 2007, she has taught French and Spanish courses. She received an Excellence Teaching Award from Harvard University in 2002. Okay, uh, thank you very much for being here, and it was a very um, wonderful experience to be part of the Smithsonian uh, Fellowship, and I'm happy that you are here now. Uh, yeah, that's my, my long name, and the title is the, in the next slide is the title uh, that you already heard from Mimi, Legendary Exchanges Transforming Our Lives from the Old World to the New World and vice versa. Um, okay, and yeah, she's... Okay, so uh, um, the class, I, I will explain more about the class that I use for, in, in which I, I implement the project, which was Spanish too, but so to, uh, to prepare the students for that, uh, what I did was uh, all the time, you know, not just for the cultural project, but every time we had an opportunity to have, because we use a lot of pictures in the classes, um, to describe things, everything was related to the, you know, to the exchange of the Colombian exchange. So like this is the dream of Cristobal Columbus uh, by, painted by Salvador Dalí. Okay, uh, this is my, the, my class, the part of my syllabus, uh, Spanish too. It's a fast track, that, uh, that means that only goes half of the semester because it's intensive. And so, which means that was the big challenge uh, because the students have to learn the most difficult part of the Spanish grammar, actually is in Spanish too. And so the, in, um, you know, like for instance, the subjunctive mood and also the difference in the indicative mood between the um, preterit indefinite and preterit uh, imperfect, and also, you know, many more difficult things. And then we have to do very fast. I always tell them, um, you know, this is gonna be a marathon and we're gonna have to cover seven chapters in almost like half of the semester actually, right? And so this time I uh, told them that besides uh, the seven chapters, we're gonna visit two times the Smithsonian Museum. Which we did. So the cultural project usually is only ten percent in all the classes, uh, but I thought, uh, without asking the dean, that is not here, <laughs> and without asking the chair, I thought you know they're gonna go two times to the museum, and they're gonna you know have put a lot of time in this. So I changed it a little bit to fifteen percent. So uh, and then they, they what they have to do besides learning the language. Uh, they, they need to, of course, the research has to be simple, you know, a simple research. And plus, so they need to have a PowerPoint presentation and they, um, about the topic that they decided to research. And so in order to guide them, uh, besides explaining the syllabus and then talking about the cultural project, that how it will be different from other semesters, um, then I did some stuff to, I mean, some things to prepare the students for the, the visit, the Smithsonian visits, uh, that most of them were never, you know, were never there. So it was the first time for many of them to go, especially to this American Indian Museum, the, the one that I chose, um, you know, so they, so the, the, we visit, and the first visit, since it was a class at the start, in the middle of the semester, like in October, October 20, I think, and then immediately, almost like the, uh, the first week, we had to go one time, and after we went in November. And so they prepared, the, the, they present the cultural uh, project that they were researching uh, towards the semester. 
um, uh, well, um, since I told you that this is a fast track course, so that we do a marathonic job, um, so it was important for them because, uh, you know, um, every time when they have to do a cultural project in other classes, in the French class or the Spanish class, they tend to, for instance, choose a country, for instance, Venezuela. And so they say a little bit of each thing, you know, like they say the population of Venezuela, the capital of Venezuela, who is the president, who is this, and then you get a, an idea that they were like a just all you can eat buffet and they have a little, you know, information or something, but you don't know exactly what they have learned. So I told them for this particular project, I would like for you to focus not in all because there were more than these contributions and some that are not contributions um, in the exchange. So uh, I told them, we're going to focus just in that, you know, anything related to the flora, the fauna or illness. It uh, could be from the, um, uh, the new world to the old world or vice versa, they could choose. Uh, and so, and me, my students, well, so this is part of the preparation the, to before we're going, right? So, um, this is Pablo Neruda, and Pablo Neruda uh, was a, a poet from Chile who uh, won the Nobel Prize of Literature in 1971. And um, so he, he has a lot of beautiful poems, many of them related to like odd, you know, odd to a cat that you will see later, uh, to the wine, to the corn, to the tomato, to different things. And so it's like celebration of life and it's very, um, interesting, and so I can read this, but then you will see the translation. Vino color de día, vino color de noche, vino con pies de púrpura o sangre de topacio, vino estrellado hijo de la tierra, vino liso como una espada de oro, suave como un desordenado terciopelo. And of course, continuous, this is one part. And then you have the translation there, if you want to see it. <laughs> As the translation is part of it, you know, it's, it's a longer poem and it's a very beautiful one. Of course, when we talk about that, we were talking like uh, the grape, the origin of grape, how grape came, you know, from Europe to the Americas. And then in Chile, the poet from Chile is, uh, you know, Chile, probably, you know, that have wonderful wines, you know, and wonderful grapes. So, um, and so and this is the Oda al Gato. I'm going to read the, the part of the Spanish because you can read the English. So, oh, pequeño emperador sin orbe, conquistador sin patria, mínimo tigre de salón, nupcial sultán del cielo, de las tejas eróticas, el viento del amor, en la intemperie reclamas cuando pasas y posas, cuatro pies delicados en el suelo, oliendo, desconfiando de todo lo terrestre, porque todo es inmundo para el inmaculado pie, pie del gato. So, and this is one of my cats. I have two <laughs> cats. His name is Garlic, so very appropriate also <laughs> for the exchange. <laughs> so, and um, yeah. So, uh, well, like this, you know, at the beginning, I make the students to describe, you know, and then they feel also they bring some pictures of their own pets and something. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and this was uh, also part of the preparation. I think you need to click. Yeah. I'm not going to, uh, I mean, the music is very nice, but. You can, if you wanted, you can just go to YouTube and say Calle 13 Latinoamérica and you will hear that that song. It's very nice. But can you do a, a click again so it comes the... No, 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 play no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is, um, so I want the students to see, you know, how the other people, the people in the Americas felt about the exchange. You know, some were good things, you know, many good things, but some others, perhaps they didn't feel that, that, Fine, you click again because there's more. Okay, thank you. So like for instance, you know those, uh, Calle 13 is a, is a group that is singing now and they are from Central America. And so they they were basically complaining, um, well, complaining about that how Latin America has been, um, has been used, you know, for the natural resources and things like that. So, but the, the song is nice, you know, especially in the part that says, uh, you cannot buy the wind, you can't buy the sun, you can't buy the rain, etc. And then you can't buy my happiness, you cannot buy my pains. And, and it's a very ni nice song. And so, uh, also part of the preparation was to talk a little bit about uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, um, 
who won the Nobel Prize of Literature in 1982, and his speech, because everybody, you know, you know, when a person, um, a person wins a Nobel Prize, they have to give a speech and the, in the Swedish Academy, and when they do that, they have, a, of course, a title and everything. So his title, because his topic, you know, every people say that the writers have only one topic, and they in all the books they write about the same thing. So in the case of, of Garcia Marquez, uh, his topic was solitude. And so, la soledad de América Latina, the loneliness, or solitude of Latin America. So those are uh, two quotes from that uh, speech, and I will read one of them. Uh, Latin America neither wants nor has any reason to be a, a pound without a will of its own, nor is it merely wishful thinking that this quest for independence and originality should become a Western aspiration. However, the navigational advances that have narrowed such distances between our Americas and Europe seem conversely to have accentuated our cultural remoteness. Uh, why is the originality so readily granted as in literature, so mistreatfully denied us in our difficult attempts of, at social change. Of course, um, I explained to the students to be, you know, fair that uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez was from the left, and you know, is politically speaking, he was, you know, very close friend of Fidel Castro, and so, um, and also he wrote that speech in 1982, and so he was referring, like, uh, you know, why Latin America is consider, you know, like everything in literature or uh, music or something is, oh, cool, you know, they are doing uh, new things, that's fine, it's accepted, but when it comes like a, a political change, they say, oh, excuse me, you know, that's different, and so he was referring to that. And so at the end, in this other quote, they said, this, my friend, is the very scale of our solitude, no? And he mentioned different things. It's a very beautiful, actually, um, speech. And to my students that are in other classes, advanced in Spanish, intermediate or advanced classes, you, or they always read that, you know, in Spanish. Okay. So that was the, you know, one of the charters that we use in the class also to, to talk to them, to, to tell them you focus in one item at a time for the Colombian exchange. And the same here, exchange of products. Yeah, and those are my wonderful students. It was a small class. Um, many of them are going to study health science. So uh, two of them are going to be, oh, they want to be doctors and uh, another wants to study f uh, like pharmacy. So they chose, uh, when they have the presentation, they prefer to have one related in a way to what they are studying. So, it, so they chose illness. So one talk about malaria, for instance, or chicken pox and things like that. And the others, you know, di different types, like one of these was tomato and then corn and one talk about the cat. Yeah. And so this is, you know, part of the, uh, when we went to visit the, the, first, the first visit. So, and of course I used the pictures that I had in the class to always, you know, contextualize everything related to the Smithsonian. So to make them, you know, for them more meaningful and plus to understand, oh, be careful, you have to do your project. So then, um, so this, this means, uh, hi, I'm a ferocious animal and beautiful, and I'm from Costa Rica. Yeah. So this is one of my students. She was very nice, and she went with a, a family member. And so this is also another point. I remember I told you that Neruda had many odds of different, you know, different things. Even there is a, an a odd about, uh, odd a las cosas rotas broken things, you know, it's very nice, all his poems. So America from a, a grain of maize, you grew to crow with the spacious lands, the ocean foam, a grain of maize was your geography from the grain, a green lands rose was covered with gold to grace the heights of Peru with its yellow tassels. This is another student, he's the one who is gonna study medicine and he wrote a, uh, had a presentation about malaria. And so and she's going to study pharmacy. They were, you know, you have to know that the Spanish II uh, class is a, still a basic level, but it's this, all the Spanish grammar is taught there, the second part of the Spanish grammar, the most difficult part. 
And the students do not need the class for, you know, for more, I think for any of the careers, they don't need a class. So the ones that are in the class are very motivated students. So, uh, and this is my son, Michael, future student of Montgomery College, maybe. <laughs> He's in, in sixth grade now. And he enjoy, you know, going to the museum with me because since I told the students you can bring your family members, then I also give the example by bringing Michael. That at the beginning he was complaining, but then when he was there, he said, oh, this is cool because he had visited other museums, but not that. So how the cultural project work? Yeah, this is just summarizing, of course. Um, the students did enjoy the experience of the museum. They liked it very much. And they did presentations that were impressive and also all in Spanish. You know, because uh, this was the first time that I have guided them to, I mean, I give them less freedom than ever for the cultural presentation, because usually it's, okay, do whatever you want or something, but I give suggestions, and sometimes they follow some suggestions, but sometimes they prefer just to talk about Shakira, Jennifer Lopez, <laughs> you know, like this. And so, and then this time, I, they didn't have a choice. So, and they did a very good job. They did a very good job, yeah. So thanks a million to Sara. Uh, Duce and Mimi, man, for the great support and warm guidance. They were really so nice. And I'm also thankful to Carl Smith. Uh, he's a colleague in uh, Tacoma Park. He teaches history uh, because he encouraged me to apply for the Smithsonian Fellowship. Uh, he was so enthusiastic all the time. And he was saying, everybody has to go to the Smithsonian. Everybody has to do that. And I was saying, wow, it must be <laughs> something very cool about it. <laughs> and then thanks a lot to my colleagues for sharing their expertise and enthusiasm for two semesters. And thanks to all of you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.